Hello, I'm Reggie Young. I'm here again. Happy to welcome back Webhoff. Webhoff is the founder CEO of autoblogging.ai, which in my opinion is by far the best AI generated um, blog copywriting tool out there. Webhoff, if you could give us a quick update on what you've been up to and uh, maybe the state of uh, AI and, and copywriting right now. Hi, Reggie. Yeah. Um... So we have been working on a lot of new features right now. Uh, in the past like 15, 20 days, a lot has changed in this space uh, since the release of ChatGPT. Uh, it has actually helped us a lot in development and uh, you know getting more ideas on how we can tweak the AI for article writing. And it's not limited to article write writing anymore. Like we can add optimization, we can do rewriting uh, anchor text, or I think it's. It's quite broad now. The possibilities are endless. And the more you go into on Twitter, I think you will find a new use case every time you scroll down. Right. It's kind of scary as well. But yeah, it's quite great. And I've been trying to implement all those features like in auto blogging, in um, auto linking, the new thing we are <laughs> we will be launching in a week. So yeah, it's quite great right now. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting because uh, since we our first episodes when we first talked about uh, the power of creating an AI written uh, copywriting blog, and like you said, the space has blown up so fast, and so many people are coming with interesting ways to provide prompts and leverage AI, and it's really starting to ex explode my mind because I knew it was huge. I know it's going to change the world for better and for worse, but how how much of that impact is you know left to be seen but really getting close to understanding the different ways to leverage it right now for me it's like how can i ask questions how can i i just use it in my business the other day i normally have my virtual assistant scrape the internet for certain aspects of what i'm trying to build and i just asked chat gbt3 to do it and it and, you know it spat it out in like five seconds so i love that of course as you're building you're watching the space and you're looking at all the unique functionalities. And because you have such a solid like foundation of this use case, I'm really excited how you integrate these future additions into what you're already building out. Um, if you could, I know you, you mentioned you, you, you are launching and you're getting up live right now, your auto linking site. If you yeah. could maybe explain the benefits of what that, uh, what, what linking auto linking is, why someone should should do it, and, um, and and why they should use your software versus other use cases that don't provide basically what you're doing. Okay, yeah. First of all, Charge has a lot of use cases when it comes to coding. Yeah, it's definitely the number one out there. Uh, even I use it every day. I think yeah, for simple little small doubts, I think I just run it through Chart GPT just to be sure about it uh, before implementing the codes and. Uh, this phase has been actually been expanding with a lot of pace, um, quite, quite great pace actually, because with each and every, uh, thing that you read on the internet, you just need to try it out. Like, okay, let's see what AI would output, uh, would, uh, generate text for this particular problem that I'm using. And if it works and if it works on you know, multiple times, you can actually integrate that into auto blogging or auto linking or whatever. It's basically it. Chat GPT has become like a test ground for a lot of different new things. You can test a lot of things, like in every space. If you want to rewrite stuff, if you want to add uh, tables in a tab, um, data in a tab tabular format, or if you want schema markups, like it's quite crazy. And we are trying to capture everything, everything, and add it as features in auto blogging. And uh, coming to auto linking not AI, it's basically for people who have a lot of sites or don't have a team right now to do internal linking manually. Uh, we are going to make their lives easier with auto linking.ai. So it will basically, what it does is, um, it will place internal links between all the related articles to your uh, main article in the entire site. And it will be done like hands-free. You don't need to do anything. Only share credentials and our team will take over. And it will take like a day to process a site which has like 100, 200, 300 articles and it will be like magical for you. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds pretty amazing. Cause I think 
this I would imagine, and it makes sense is the natural evolution of the service offering that you provide. So if you have, if you started with autoblogging.ai, right. And in my opinion, you still make the best, the best for sure copywriting blog, either whether it's one click generated, or if you, if you want to do a little bit more work, get a little bit more specific and still have it bulk generate articles like really, really quickly. Well, now you can reach that next level by interlinking all of them. So it's interesting because some people I would imagine don't have multiple websites or even one website with, uh, you know, 200 articles or a hundred articles or even 50 articles, but what they can do in less than a day, in my opinion, regardless of whatever their niche is, even if they have a website or not, stand up a website super quickly, sign up for autoblog.ai, do a little basic keyword research, type those keywords in, generate a hundred articles in less than a day, sign up for autolinking.ai and then link the two together or auto link them together. Right. So to me, it's like the use case is just as important and it's just an, another iteration of a service offering that you provide. And the way I see it is like AI is moving so fast. We have to see this opportunity because it's, it's a massive opportunity and the use case you're providing is that next layer. And I'm seeing, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, you mentioned Twitter. I'm more active on LinkedIn than I am on Twitter, but I realize the people on LinkedIn aren't as tech savvy and forward thinking about the future as people on yeah. Twitter, right? To me, the more corporate, the more like, oh, you know, like, yeah, chat GPT-3, I, I made, it, it gave me this image and it's kind of funny or whatever, right? But people on Twitter are always like, you know, what's, what's hot, what's coming out right now, we're, we're, we're on the bleeding edge of tech, politics, et cetera. We know the moment it comes out. Well, the way I see it is with the, the linking factor to what you're trying to do is so powerful that we have to move fast. Like the AI is coming out so fast that we have to, we have to like, yeah. not, not just see this as an opportunity, but see this as a land grab because the moment you don't do it, your competition is going to do it. So it's like, that's why I love following you in this space. And you literally didn't stop at autoblogging.ai, right? I know, like, I'm following you on your Facebook group. I'm constantly seeing the updates that you're making. And I'm like, oh, crap, I wish I had generated this blog post uh, when you did it now. But, like, the fact that you're constantly iterating on it, making it better, making it better, now you have this whole other complimentary service offering. In my opinion, even if you don't have the blogs up and ready now, well, now is the perfect time, right? And uh, so, to me, it's an absolute absolute no brainer. So, um, you talked about interlinking in mass automatically multiple blogs to, uh, within each other, within each other internally, but could you explain why that internal linking is, is important to a blog in terms of SEO? So yeah, internal linking actually passes juice, juice from one article to another. And it is also quite good. If your readers go from one page to another, it, in, it decreases your bounce rate which is another good factor, another major factor when it comes to SEO, Google tracks that. And if, if a user say goes from your site back to Google in like 10 to 20 seconds, it will like, it will mark the site as not helpful, for example. Mm -hmm. And if, uh, if a user goes to, you know, from one, from one article to another, and it reads that as well and stays on the site for two to three minutes for, uh, for instance. Uh, Google will actually find your articles helpful. So that will help, uh, help in, you know, um, more rank, ranks, better ranks and et cetera. So it's quite good as user experience and also for Google ranks and internal linking is very much beneficial and everyone should do it. Uh, as you said, like the, the space is moving very fast. There are a lot of different AI writers out there, but, uh, even if yeah. you have those articles right now on the site, you need the internal, internal linking, you need those on page optimization. So that's the thing that we're working on. Uh, we also have another tool lined up. It will be launched in like 15 to 20 days. I think so. I hope so. Uh, it will be for um, auto stuff and keywords in your articles. So once, even uh, though you've done it, yeah, auto, auto stuffing, uh, auto stuffing, auto stuffing. Yeah. So. Wow. It will be like simply, you know, you, you can have a list of keywords you want in an article 
um, you know, to make, to make it more SEO optimized, you can use tools like Surfer SEO. It will give you a data of keywords that should be present in an article, um, but it's not. So our tool will automatically do it. And we have already tested that. We are already doing it for some corporate clients of ours. And we will re release this task very soon. So, so yeah. this, I, this, this stuffing um, uh, feature software that you're coming out with, is that for existing articles that are, have already been written? Yeah. Okay. So what will yeah. happen is, um, so what, it will basically mimic a human being. So if you have editors or proofreaders in your team, they might be re rephrasing sentences to stuff a keyword or whatever, whatever. And we have actually automated that entire thing. Uh, AI will rewrite all those sentences, stuff those keywords where it makes sense. Uh, making sense is very much important in this case. And uh, yeah, that's it. So wow. it's quite crazy. Like we have been developing new things for agencies, like on a God speed, God like speed actually. Uh, but for SaaS, it takes time because we need to set up everything like customer support, um, right. the back end, who will do things like our team will be there. Yeah? So it's quite slow, but it's quite exciting as well. So. Wow. That's super interesting. Um, it just makes you think, right? With the whole AI thing, it's destroying jobs. And everybody thought that AI would first destroy uh, manual labor in terms of, you know, the, the yeah. construction worker on the highway, but it's destroying more of the uh, creative type of work you could say um and i'm i think it's mat basic in my opinion unless you're just operating with absolute massive like god-like intuition where you just know the exact move and that one move is gonna 10x everything that you do unless i feel like you can move like that all the time in my opinion you have to use ai as a foundation because your competitors like if someone's competing me with me in the niches I'm going after, good luck because I already have a ton of articles out there. And when this comes out, I'm going to be linking between all of them and then I'm going to be keyword stuffing all of them and taking, and I'm going to be doing that myself or my VA who used to do nothing but try and make a, a blog post for half of his day is going to be the one doing that at scale. So I think it's, it's absolutely uh, exciting and 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 huge the, the the and i really love the keyword stuffing part so i'm curious is would i be able to take a competitor's a, a competitor's blog post maybe like literally compile the top three uh com yeah. top three blog posts put them together and then re and then re-optimize them and then yeah you can uh, actually yeah <laughs> so what you can do is you know if you use semrish or hf uh, you right. can scrape keywords that the competitors are ranking for and stuff those keywords in your article like automatically. So yeah. it's, it can work on scale and we are yeah. already, already doing, uh, doing that. So yeah, I can tell you it works as well. Yeah. I love it. You know, it's interesting because as soon as I think about, okay, I can use autoblogging.ai this way. And literally a month ago, I was like, okay, well, it, it generates the article very, very quickly. And I know he's doing all kinds of things, like looking at the questions people care about. I know he's answering them in a great format. All the things we talked about on the previous podcast, right? It's not just spitting out a basic ad, basic ass answer that is in chat GBT3 that Google knows is AI written, right? We already talked about how your tool is able to skirt past that and, and basically be yeah. one of the lowest ranking, if not the lowest ranking AI copywriting tool out there that is, you know, it, it's basically close to undetectable, if not, I'm pretty sure undetectable, at least the, the videos I've seen as it comes to, to writing AI, I think that's really powerful. And it's just, when you put it all together, it makes to me like absolute sense to, to leverage all three, all three platforms of what you're talking about. I'm really excited for yeah. the keyword stuffer, but as I mentioned, when I was trying to identify ways to use, to use the blog, I was like, well, okay, he has it all formatted. And I was literally thinking about the keywords. I was like, well, you're already doing the keywords in a way. Because I, I know you are because you have to be scraping the keyword. I see it in there. But I see what you're talking about when you take that to that next level optimization. You literally have that foundation of autoblogging.ai. And I know, like you said, you're like, now, okay, it's internal linking. Okay, now it's keyword stuffing and making sure that the semantics work well while still not being detectable. And I was thinking about trying to do that because I know they have, you know, a bunch of these, like you said, AI copywriting tools you can copy and paste your blog in there and write it just like you said, surf for SEO. And it has the color coding and the keyword density and all that stuff. And it still takes time and effort to do that. Where yeah. it's like, as you're talking, I thought about 
well, damn, he literally just replaced not one VA, not a copywriter. You just replaced a, an, a marketing, an AI. You replaced a creative copywriting agency. And you're doing it at an absolute fraction of the cost with like a pay-as-you-go model or like, you know, it's like, to me, in my opinion, it's so cheap. You're giving it away for free. So I hope you keep your price as low as long as possible. And uh, I know you had a slight I increase in your, um, in your pricing recently. So I know as you scale out, of course, your, your cost of production, managing your team goes up. But I think it's still absolutely completely affordable. Um, even not comparing it to what you would pay a, a copywriter to do manually, you compare it to other tools and it's, it's still super affordable and in my opinion, still the best option out there. So uh, that's the thing. <laughs> that's why I raise my prices because at some level, I think, okay, whatever, whatever I'm offering, it has some value. So I didn't want to give it away for cheap. Like even the person who is buying it, he, he should know like, okay, yeah, I'm buying something valuable and I should actually use it like in a proper way. Instead of, you know, just bidding out stuff like for cents and publishing it all across the internet. It's not, it's not what I'm looking for. Actually. I don't want you to spam the internet. I want you to, to right. build quality blogs so that, right. you know, uh, you make money in the end. It's not about spamming everything. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, one of my mentors, uh, when I sold my business for 638,000, I had that whole business. I had, was a $3,000 investment. I ended up netting over $900,000 total when everything was all said and done off of a $3,000 investment. And I thought I knew e-commerce really well, really well. It was Amazon FBA. It was Shopify. I was like, oh, blog posts don't really matter. And then my mentor, this was years ago showed me like the idea of creating a massive pillar post for my niche, literally like not a thousand words, but like maybe three, four, 5,000 words that had like all the major keywords by category. And the keywords were based off of search funnel of like, you know, why do people like this niche? And then it got more focused of, um, this brand versus that brand, what's the best, whatever, you know, and then like breaking all that down to a massive pillar post. And then what would happen is over time, that one page would start to rank for these high level keywords. And then those smaller links would then eventually go into category pages and or product pages. And it created this massive funnel within Silent. itself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it makes me think about that and i'm thinking okay well if you're auto linking in between and i'm choosing keywords that i know at the same time are are in a way creating that same structure i could be yeah. creating that same structure instantly by making sure i'm choosing the right keywords at the right level um to create that auto linking um thing so i think it's absolutely massive and even from the most fundamental so that to me was like in terms of e-commerce that's what 95 percent of people are not doing in e-commerce they're not doing that it's all Product page optimization, paid advertising, launch the next product, and work with some super expensive agency. But no one is doing the blog aspect of it. And when, anytime they do the blog yeah. aspect, it's three blogs written by a really bad copywriter who doesn't understand SEO, right? How about you sign up for autoblog.ai, <laughs> bulk generate articles, auto link them together, choose some good keywords. And now you literally just, in my opinion, you you created the value that would cost thousands and thousands of dollars and probably months and still be sub-optimized. And now you'd be able to create that use case. I think it's absolutely powerful. And one other quick story I wanted to mention is because it comes to my mind, I'm not even considering SEO and all that. My first Shopify store, I did $64,000 in revenue in the first two months when it got live, it took me months to get, you know, it's my first business. So I was like, it took me like a month just to download Shopify and like kind of figure things out. And for the first month, I, nothing was hitting at all. Like literally nothing was hitting. I couldn't, I was kind of getting Google ads to kind of work, kind of not, but there's two big things that made, that really tipped it over for me. The first one was a persistent add to cart button. So the add to cart, like basically and blogging, like a, a header or a banner that was always persistent, right? Um, that one was really big because it, it basically gave the visibility of the, a call to action or a clickable link basically to, to convert the yeah. user, right? When we think about that from SEO, well, I thought about that and the add to cart button really worked. This was in 2015, right? Like nobody was really talking about link juice theory. People who were doing e-commerce were just Amazon, Alibaba, right? No, very few people were interdisciplinary when it came to SEO. But when I started thinking about these things, I thought, okay, well, everyone's clicking. I was, it was a crossbow store 
and my average order value was $2,000. Everyone's clicking on this one really old crossbow from two years ago. It's weird, but this new one just came out. So all I did in the description was link to the new one. And by doing that, I literally like leaped everyone that was running paid ads to that crossbow because I ranked for it organically and that linking happened there. So not even from that crossbow page ranking in Google, I was able to capture keyword rank on something that was less competitive and yeah. pivot it over to something that was, and it didn't have an SEO benefit. It had an actual e-commerce benefit that, that allowed me to make 64 K in revenue that month. So I think even if you're not seeing it from that use case of, oh, this can boost my SEO. Oh, it can do a lot more than that, right? It can actually create conversions uh, financially on your site immediately. And you're doing that at scale. So I think it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, actually makes sense. Yeah, so that's the thing. First part is SEO. Second is user experience. So a user might actually feel, okay, yeah, this guy has suggested me a second product, which is quite new and better than the first one. So yeah, it builds trust as well. So yeah, it's quite good. Internal linking is very much important. Mm -hmm. What what would you say are some like uh, common uh, like troubleshoot internal linking problems that people come across whether they're doing it themselves uh, and how does your your software either mitigate that or what do you have on the roadmap how you know how does using your software prevent the problems that most people come across when internal linking? So when one suppose you have a site with thousand articles and I'm talking about like okay the spam when the new site basically. A lot of people are running different sites and different niches and general niche sites, which has sports, for example, sports, tech, um, politics. Um, so what everyone is laughing is, uh, internal linking actually between the same category. Um, so actually it's quite complex to be, uh, if you have a single person doing it, it's quite impossible for for a site with thousand articles, because you need to make a create, uh, you need to create a proper silo structure between all the articles. Uh, and you also need to make sure that all articles are related, related to each other. The anchor texts are not similar. Uh, there are anchor variations. Like there are a lot of different stuff when it comes to internal linking. And uh, actually I, like you said, I'm basically replacing uh, an entire department of, in, of the guys who do internal linking because we have taken care of everything here. Right. So we will add anchor variation. We will make sure all the articles are related to each other. And we will also make sure that one article is not having the same links to the same article, like multiple links to the same article. Uh, right. So there are a lot of different if and else statements in the code, for example, uh, right. to be honest. And it all actually adds up to one simple thing, like replacing those guys who are doing it right. manually. Um, yeah. For someone, I know a lot of users who have like 10, 20, 50 sites or even 100, 200 sites. And they are going to my first, they are going to be my first customer. They have been waiting for this tool since long. <laughs> yeah, so, like that. I, yeah, it makes I, me. I'm actually make, learning cool. feedback as well because a lot of guys have different strategies, SEO strategies. Like they have particular checklists when they do internal linking with their team. So they have been sharing that, those stuff with me. And we yeah. have been implementing those things like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. And since they are already pros in this field, so yeah, sometimes it actually matters. Like, okay, uh, we can, uh, we, we actually saw movements going from stagnant to like straight up bonus, bonus wow. graph, um, after just after internal linking. So yeah, it's quite great. Uh, I, I love, I love that. Again, it, it brings back to your, you're building this, not from just you know, a lot of software builders, I feel like one, they don't understand exactly what they're building. They see a gap in the market and they outsource everything, right? But like your core understanding of SEO and building a platform around that one, it's evident to me in autoblogging.ai based off the outputs. It's evident to me that SEO is the foundation of that, of that output. And then now you're talking about interlinking, right? So you're telling me there's different principles when it comes to linking. You don't just like link, like throw spaghetti on but like, oh, it's all connected to each other because now they're all linked together. You're talking about, okay, there, there has to be category specific things. You want to break common practices, right? So if you're to outsource that to another virtual assistant or somebody else, they have to understand the article. They have to understand the context. Oh. They have to know how, how to, how to link it, where to link it. So in a way it's not, and that's one thing I, I really like about AI 
you can train five different things in that. And then that AI is literally seven people in one that knows all those principles and is balancing all those things based on the rules and the logic that you're applying to the, to the model. So um, I really love that because like you said, if you do it manually, some person at one point may not know this, but they know that. And then of course, taking the masterminds that you're a part of and introducing those principles at both the auto blog level, now the linking level, and I'm sure at the keyword stuffing level and everything you have on your roadmap moving forward, super, super powerful. Very, very interested. Um, with that, do you have any um, parting thoughts before we wrap up uh, today's episode in regards to uh, auto blogging AI or, 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 or linking AI in general? Um, yeah, I, I, I just like to say that like the future is very bright for automation and we are going to be like implementing a lot of different features, like every week, I think, yeah, we have, I have the sticky, can you see the sticky notes in my background? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know yeah, you got I some more behind you too. Stuff. Yeah. I'm tracking all the stuff with my team and we need to implement some stuff like right away. So it's quite uh, interesting and uh, I think we are missing out, even though we are, it might, you might feel that we are doing it at a very good pace, but with chat GPT, I think we are laughing behind. Like, okay, <laughs> yeah, we do things quickly, like no need to sleep or whatever. It's, it's quite great. It's quite an interesting time, but also scary because hmm. the blogging industry might, might be actually, you know, uh, hmm. outdated or, you know, once chat GPT is integrated with Bing. I don't know what will happen to um, blogging industry because if you're not um, generating new content like that, which is about news or any new recent happening, everything else can be summarized by chat GPT. So right. it's quite scary. I don't know what's going to happen, but yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it makes me think. Yeah. It, it's right. Right. You're totally right. You are, in my opinion, freaking light years ahead of another human-based agency doing what you want to do. And I just, I absolutely love the way that you're thinking about it because you know you're competing with AI and the macro environment. So I really love that. And the way, I, the way I see it is like, and I was having this conversation with a good friend of mine the other day, I think right now is the time to be, is to be leveraging AI. Because when GBT4 comes out or this macro integration happens, right? Wow. The, a lot of things are going to collapse on itself. So why not leverage it at the point where less people are using AI right now for us to build assets of which we can either build an audience or monetize. So, you know, the way I say it is like, okay, I, I'm, I have blogs that I'm working on right now. Okay. Literally when chat GBT4 comes out and someone does the exact same thing that I'm trying to do right now, and they do it in five seconds or 20 seconds, et cetera, a year from now, two years from now, well, if I can capture traffic right now for the next year, if I can do that right now and be an authority right now and build an email list right now, if I can do that and build an authority right now, if I can do that and, and, and move audiences across multiple platforms or be the person that they remember right now, that, to me, that's worth it. Yeah? So I, I just love the way you're thinking about it, how forward thinking you are, how integrated a lot of your principles are all the way through the vertical integration of the use cases that you're trying to. By the way, yeah, the another, another, uh, one another tip for you or, and everyone who is listening this, uh, I think you should start leveraging AI, not in tech, basically not in SaaS or whatever. I think you should start thinking of integrating AI in physical world. Like for example, textile industry or, you know, shirts or garment t-shirt. I think you should start using AI to generate random images, like whatever the customer wants and it should get printed for them. Like this is, this is one of the ideas that I'm running through in my head right now. Like, okay. Uh, the tech will get outdated like in one or two years, but if you have a solid hold in the physical industry, I think you should, you, you should have like five to 10 years in your hand to make money out of it. So you right. can start. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Start thinking of something which is not particularly software, but also which is applicable in the physical world. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I love that. Love that. Okay. Well, Vebov, thank you so much again for coming on the show. Super excited for everything you're doing. Uh, if anyone just is interested, you can check out everything we talked about in the links down below, uh, reach out to the web office and his team, keep an eye on them, join their Facebook group. It's always interesting uh, to see what you're building. And uh, I definitely think more people need eyes on this. And I'm, I just feel really you know, grateful that I feel pretty grateful that not that the entire copywriting blog world doesn't know about you yet. Cause I feel like I can leverage those tools right now. Um, but definitely I'll, I'll recommend anyone who's watching this uh, to, to, to try it out. Yeah. Yeah. Really have nothing to lose. So 
Deboff, thank you again for coming on the show and uh, we'll be in touch. Yeah. Okay. Bye.